Hasta la vista, baby. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a famous actor, bodybuilder, politician, and businessman who managed to realize his American dream. In this video, we'll tell you about how a poor immigrant managed to turn into a governor and a Hollywood actor with a huge fortune. Arnold Schwarzenegger, how Terminator lives and how he spends his millions. Arnold Aloya Schwarzenegger was born on July 30, 1947, in the community of Tal, Austria, into a Catholic family of Gustav and Aurelia. It is known that in 1938, his father joined the Nazi army of Germany, which Arnold would be very ashamed of in the future. Although his father didn't have any proven war crimes, during the Second World War, Gustav participated in the siege of Leningrad, where he was seriously wounded. Arnold's parents got married in 1945. At that time, Gustav was 38 years old, and Arelli was 23 years old. For the girl, this marriage was her second. Her first husband died in the war. In 1946, Gustav and Arelia had their first child, Meinhard, and a year later, Arnold, who became an outcast in the family. All because Gustav suspected his wife of infidelity and believed that Arnold was not his biological son. Schwarzenegger's childhood cannot be called happy because his duties included getting up at 6 in the morning and doing all the hard work before school. For any mistake, his father who worked as the local chief of police severely punished him and even gave him the nickname Cinderella. In addition, the family lived very poorly, but this only motivated Arnold to become successful in the future. Gustav was an athlete and demanded the same from his sons, so Arnold played soccer from a young age and a little later started weightlifting. When the boy turned 14, he went with a friend to Vienna to watch the World Weightlifting Championships. Arnold was among the spectators watching Soviet weightlifter Yuri Vlasov win the world title, becoming the first person to lift 445 pounds over his head. Schwarzenegger was so impressed by what he saw that he decided that day he would devote his life to bodybuilding. Since then, Arnold began to train daily and on weekends when the gym was closed, he would break in through the window and work out even harder. His parents were concerned with their son's new hobby. His mother, seeing posters of half-naked muscular men in his room, even suspected Arnold of being gay, and his father was dissatisfied with the nationality of his main idol, Vlasov, and demanded to find a German or Austrian icon. At 17, Arnold participated in his first bodybuilding competition in Graz, where he took second place. At 18, he was drafted into the army for a year. It was impossible to call Schwarzenegger a good soldier. During his service, he managed to drown a tank in a river, destroy a hangar, and even go AWOL just to participate in the Mr. Europe contest. Because of this violation, he was sent to the guardhouse, but after learning that he took first place in that competition, the officers released him and even gave him a two-day vacation. After his service ended in 1966, Schwarzenegger went to Munich, where he got a job at a fitness club. It is worth noting that back then, Arnold severed ties with his father and brother, who had humiliated him, and in the future, he didn't even attend their funerals. In Munich, the young man didn't have enough money at first, and he had to sleep on the floor in the gym. In addition, matters would get worse because of constant fines for street fights, which he initiated almost every day. In the same year, Arnold went to London for the Mr. Universe contest, where he unexpectedly took second place. The following year, he managed to win the long-awaited title at 20, becoming the youngest winner in the entire history of the competition. At the same time, Schwarzenegger participated in international powerlifting tournaments, where he repeatedly became a champion. The young man always wanted to live in the USA, and in 1968, he realized his dream by moving to California, where he continued his training. At first, Schwarzenegger stayed in the country illegally, and he was able to obtain citizenship only in 1983. In addition, the young man spoke English rather poorly, but it didn't prevent him from reaching for success. Back then, Schwarzenegger already earned his first million a few years before the start of his acting career. Arriving in California, 
He opened a bricklaying business with a friend. Because of the earthquake in San Fernando, the demand for building materials increased and with it, the company's profit. The guys invested the money they earned in a new business, mailing out equipment and VHS tapes with instructions for bodybuilding and fitness. In 1969, Arnold met a teacher, Barbara Baker, who became his first love. The young man, of course, was infamous for numerous affairs, but before meeting Barbara, he didn't really love anyone. In the same year, Schwarzenegger participated for the first time in the Mr. Olympia contest, where he took second place. In the next year, he managed to win the competition and at 23, became the youngest champion in the entire history of the competition. This record hasn't been broken so far. At the same time, his acting career began. Arnold's film debut, was the lead role in Hercules in New York in 1970. But in the credits, he appeared under the last name Strong, since his real one seemed too difficult. What's your second name, Hercules what? As I've told you, I'm Hercules, the son of Zeus. I don't think it needs any disrespect, Captain. It probably was in the translation. All right, all right. Sign him on as Hercules Zeus since he says that's his father's name and give him an OS rating, bosun. Aye, aye, sir. His character's lines were also dubbed over because of his strong Austrian accent. A joke started circulating in Hollywood that only Schwarzenegger's accent is thicker than his muscles. Arnold considers his debut role the most unsuccessful. At the same time, it brought him $12,000. Then there were the roles in the films Happy Anniversary and Goodbye, The Streets of San Francisco, The San Pedro Beach Bums, and Stay Hungry. For the latter, Schwarzenegger was awarded the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year. Meanwhile, Arnold had no equal in bodybuilding. For six years, he was the permanent holder of the title Mr. Olympia and rightfully became a bodybuilding legend. Having reached all possible heights, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from sports in 1975. A year before this event, he broke up with his beloved. The reason was Arnold's unwillingness to marry and have children which the girl wanted so much. After parting with Barbara, he met hairdresser Sue Murray, who shared his views on an open relationship. In 1977, Schwarzenegger, while in a relationship, started dating the journalist Maria Shriver, the niece of the 35th US President John F. Kennedy. This went on for a year, after which Sue insisted that Arnold decide between the girls. He chose Maria, whose relatives, by the way, were not happy about the potential son-in-law. During that period, Schwarzenegger starred in several films, The Villain, Scavenger Hunt, The Jane Mansfield Story, and Conan the Barbarian. The latter can be considered his first successful in his career. Priest's rope? Yes, it's all I have. Good. <laughs> That's all you'll ever need. Even though he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anthe Award for the worst male role, the actor's payout then amounted to $250,000. Arnold performed all the stunts himself, so he returned to strength training. Having got in good shape, he decided to participate in the Mr. Olympia contest again, which he won. In 1984, the actor appeared in the sequel, Conan the Destroyer, which brought him $1 million. Later, the film Conan the Conqueror was supposed to come out, but Arnold was busy with another project, so the trilogy remained unfinished. In the same year, the action movie The Terminator was released, which became the most recognizable film with Schwarzenegger. His character's phrase, I'll be back, became the hallmark of the actor. I'll be back and also appeared in 37th place in the list of the 100 best quotes from films. Interestingly, the scene with this phrase took nine takes to film. For The Terminator, Arnold earned $750,000 and was also nominated for the Saturn Award for Best Actor. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me, now. Fuck you, asshole. In 1985, the rising star was invited to star in the action movie Commando, which was well received by the public and brought Schwarzenegger $1.5 million. You scared, motherfucker? Well, you should be, because this green beret is going to kick your big ass. 
I ate green berets for breakfast. And right now I'm very hungry. I can't believe this macho bullshit. The actor performed all the stunts himself simply because it was hard to find a stuntman with the same physique. Although the lovemaking scene he did was so unconvincing that they had to cut it. In the same year, the film Red Sonja was released in which Danish actress Bridget Nielsen became Arnold's partner on the set. A stormy relationship flared between them, although at that time, Arnold was already engaged to Maria. After the filming was completed, the actor broke up with Nielsen, who didn't want to stay a mistress and threatened to tell his fiance everything. Then Schwarzenegger introduced Bridget to his friend Sylvester Stallone, whom she soon married. In 1986, Arnold got married too, with Maria Shriver. He had four children, Catherine, Christina, Patrick, and Christopher. A few months after the wedding, the film Raw Deal was released, in which he got the lead role. Schwarzenegger's acting career was gaining momentum, and with it, the payouts were growing. In 1987, he starred in two films, Predator and The Running Man, for which he earned $3 million and $5 million, respectively. Both films were well received by the public, and for Predator, Arnold was even nominated for Best Actor at the Saturn Film Award. At the same time, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1988, Schwarzenegger appeared in the film Red Heat. His payout was $8 million. In the same year, with his appearance in the movie Twins with Danny DeVito, the actor proved that he can play comedy roles perfectly. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. The movie creator couldn't afford to pay the two actors, so they agreed to a percentage of sales, and it was worth it. The comedy had such a resounding success at the box office that Arnold received his biggest income of $35 million. The actor has repeatedly stated that he considers this film the best in his career. In the early 1990s, Schwarzenegger starred in the film's Kindergarten Cop, for which he received $12 million, Total Recall for $10 million, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, or later, dick one. And if someone gets upset, you say, chill out. Or you could do combinations. Chill out, dick what? For the last two films, Arnold was nominated for the Best Actor category at the Saturn Film Awards. By the way, the actor preferred to receive the $15 million for the second part of The Terminator, In Kind, and asked for a Gulfstream 3 plane. Then, Schwarzenegger added the following films to his filmography. Dave, Beretta's Island, Last Action Hero, Junior, and True Lies. For the latter three, Arnold received payouts for $15 million each. Those works were awarded various nominations, and most of them Arnold received for the action movie True Lies in the category's Best Actor, Best Kiss, and Best Dance Sequence. Do you still love your husband? Yes, I love him. I've always loved him. In 1996, Arnold appeared in the comedy Jingle All the Way and in the action movie Eraser, where his partner on set was Vanessa Williams, with whom, according to rumors, he had a fleeting affair. For each of the films, the actor earned $20 million. In the next few years, Schwarzenegger starred in the films Batman and Robin, End of Days, and The Sixth Day. Even though the actor earned $72 million in total for these films, his acting was heavily criticized, and for each of these roles, he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award as the worst actor. In the early 2000s, Arnold appeared in the films Collateral Damage, for which he earned $25 million, and Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, for a payout of about $30 million. DX is designed to terminate other cybernetic organisms. So, she's an anti-Terminator... Terminator? You've got to be shitting me. No, 
I am not shitting you. After the release of the long-awaited sequel, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from the film industry and the beginning of his political career. Despite the skepticism, in 2003, he was elected the 38th governor of California with 1.3 million votes. Even though Arnold's wife is a representative of the Democratic Kennedy clan, Schwarzenegger himself is a dedicated Republican. Arnold's political activity caused a contradictory reaction from the public, and the powerful opposition seriously lowered his rating. But in 2006, Schwarzenegger was re-elected for a second term, during which he stood out for his policy of reducing costs refusing the governor's salary, but all the efforts to save money by laying off civil servants and raising taxes ended with mass protest by trade unions. As a result, the state led by Arnold suffered more than the others from the consequences of the global crisis. During this period, Arnold did not have time to act in movies. In 2004, the pre-film film Around the World in 80 Days was released for the role in which he was nominated for another Golden Raspberry. By the way, in 2005, Arnold still received a special anti-award, becoming the worst Razzie loser of the first 25 years. Schwarzenegger stepped away from political affairs only for The Expendables in 2010, where he played a cameo role. Even in the fourth part of The Terminator, they had to use a digital image of the actor. In 2011, Arnold's second and last term as governor came to an end, so he returned to the cinema. According to some reports, during his political career, the actor missed the opportunity to earn $200 million in the film industry. Changes have also occurred in his personal life. After 25 years of marriage, Arnold announced that he and his wife were divorcing. Maria loved her husband very much and turned a blind eye to numerous infidelities, but she couldn't forgive one of them. The reason was their governess Mildred, whose son Joseph was surprisingly similar to Schwarzenegger. When Maria figured out that Joseph was Arnold's son, the marriage ended. In 2012, the actor appeared in The Expendables 2, for which he earned $10 million, even though all his scenes were shot in just five days. I need a weapon. Something big. Yours! Whoa, 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 whoa. My big weapon's hanging right where it is. Come on, Caesar, you gotta back up. If I don't get this back, your ass is terminated. In your dreams. In his spare time, Arnold gives motivational lectures around the world. He has written many books on bodybuilding, and in 2012, his autobiography, Total Recall, came out. The following year, Arnold starred in the films The Last Stand with a payout of $5 million in Escape Plan. Then he added several others to his filmography, like Sabotage, Maggie, Two and a Half Men, and The Expendables 3. And for the latter, he received another nomination for Golden Raspberry. In 2015, the film Terminator Genesis was released. Won't be needing any clothes. I've been waiting for you. It was decided not to hide Arnold Schwarzenegger's age with CGI. Instead, the writers decided to explain that the living tissue that covers the Terminator can age, and the robot's hair can turn gray. During the same period, it became known about Arnold's affair with physiotherapist Heather Milligan, who is 27 years younger than him. In 2017, Arnold appeared in the films Kill Gunther and Aftermath, which turned out to be commercially unsuccessful. In 2019, he starred in the films Terminator, Dark Fate, and V2, Journey to China, for which he again received a nomination for Golden Raspberry. Exercise. Even though Schwarzenegger's acting is constantly being criticized, offers from directors continue to come, and soon, we will see new films with Iron Arnold. In 2021, Schwarzenegger's divorce process, which lasted 10 years, was completed. It took that long because the spouses hadn't signed a prenup at the time, so they had to share their jointly acquired property, and there was a lot of it. Today, Arnold's fortune is estimated at $450 million, 
which he earned through films, lectures, and advertising contracts. Arnold appeared in advertisements for a Japanese energy drink, BMW iX electric car, World of Tanks, and mobile strike games, Bud Light Beer, and others. Schwarzenegger invested money in securities of large companies, including Coca-Cola, Starbucks, and Google. Most of all, the actor liked to invest money in real estate, Nowadays, the value of Arnold's commercial real estate alone exceeds $100 million. But still, the center of his financial empire is the company Oak Productions, through which he receives payouts from film studios and percentages from comic and video game sales. At one time, the Schwarzeneggers owned a restaurant in Santa Monica, but in 1998, the establishment was sold. Also, together with LeBron James, Arnold founded a dietary supplement production company. Before the divorce, the couple lived in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles, where their children grew up. The mansion has an area of about 11,000 square feet. It includes nine bedrooms, several living rooms, a spacious kitchen, and a dining room. There is also a garden, a patio, a swimming pool with a unique geometric shape, and a tennis court. In 2013, this family nest was sold for $13 million. Now the Hollywood star lives in a one-story house with a large plot of land on the outskirts of Los Angeles with his favorite pets, Husky Dutch, Yorkshire Terrier Cherry, Donkey Lulu, and Pony Whiskey. Arnold owns a huge collection of cars, which includes Dodge Challenger SRT8, Excalibur Series 3 Phaeton, Hummer H1, Dodge M37, exclusive Jeep Grand Wagoneer Governator, Porsche 911, Mercedes SLS, Gallon Wagon Chrysler with an electric motor, Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitez, a Mercedes model specially created for Iron Arnold, and even a real M47 tank, the model he drove in the army. The actor bought it from the Austrian government for $1.4 million. The celebrity spends a significant part of his income on charity. Back in 1995, Schwarzenegger founded an organization that provides an opportunity for children from low-income families to get an education. The foundation also helps fight against HIV, AIDS, and other diseases. For example, in 2020, Arnold allocated $1 million to support medical workers, and in 2021, spent $250,000 to build 25 houses for veterans. In addition, he collaborated with the organization Velos, which is engaged in the popularization of electric vehicles. Now Iron Arnold is rightfully considered a fan's favorite. A monument was erected in his honor. A programming language and even a Costa Rican ground beetle were named after him. And the Guinness Book of Records called him the most perfectly developed man in the history of the world. Do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? How Catherine Zeta-Jones lives and how much she earns. Catherine Zeta-Jones was born in Wales on September 25, 1969. The prefix Zeta is not part of her surname. It was originally her second name, given in honor of her maternal grandmother. According to family legend, the mother of that grandmother arrived in the UK from Ireland on a ship called Zeta and named her daughter after it. When the girl started her acting career, she decided to include her middle name in her stage name in order to stand out from other Catherine Jones. Her father, David James Jones, a Welsh descendant, worked in a bakery as a baker and a cashier to feed his large family. Aside from little Catherine, they had two sons. The family was poor. They lived in a low-income neighborhood in the coastal Welsh town of Swansea. Mother Patricia was a seamstress who helped them make ends meet. This lasted until the 80s when the family suddenly became wealthy. The parents bought a lottery ticket, which brought them 100,000 pounds, which allowed them to not only buy their own pastry shop and a decent house in a good area of Swansea, but also to pay for a dance studio for their daughter, which she dreamed of. It should be noted that no one in the family except Catherine was interested in art. At a very young age, she was on the brink of death because of illness. That's why she was raised like a princess surrounded by attention. By the way, the little scar on her neck was left as a result of the tracheal surgery that saved her life. However, the girl didn't grow up spoiled, striking others with her discipline. 
At the age of four, Catherine danced on holidays and sang in the choir at the local church, where everyone who saw her predicted a great acting future for her. From the age of seven, she began to engage in choreography with full dedication, making herself a strict schedule for the whole week. Three years later, Jones was already shining on the stage of the City Theatre, and after another four years, she managed to pass the casting for the production of The Pajama Game. This was her first serious role. After the tour was over, the young actress left school without obtaining O-levels and went to London. There, she stormed all kinds of castings, not missing a single opportunity to make it to the big screen. During this period, she had a passionate relationship with the famous TV presenter John Leslie. Catherine was so carried away by the charming Scotsman that she planned to spend her whole life with him. Alas, his personality turned out to be too difficult. The future star suffered from fits of jealousy from her partner, which eventually led to a breakup. As for her acting, at first Catherine's catch was small. She was chosen only as the second understudy to the lead actress of the musical 42nd Street. The year 1990 was more successful for her as she was cast for the role of Scheherazade in the film 1001 Nights. The young, talented beauty was immediately noticed, and a year later she got a role in the series The Darling Buds of May. Critics and British viewers were delighted, and very soon, Catherine headed off to conquer Hollywood. She immediately had a chance to play in the episode of George Lucas's television series, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, which boosted her career in Hollywood. Legend has it that her role of dancer Maya impressed Steven Spielberg so much that he advised to invite her to the role of Zorro's beloved. According to another story, Spielberg noticed the actress while watching the miniseries Titanic, which was released in 1996. In the meantime, Catherine starred in a number of TV movies, including Christopher Columbus, The Discovery, Splitting Heirs, The Return of the Native, and Catherine the Great, as well as the miniseries The Cinder Path. They were followed by the comedy drama Blue Juice and the superhero movie The Phantom, though they were not very popular with the audience. During the same period, the actress was offered to play the role of Trinity in the cult classic movie The Matrix, but she refused. In the mid-90s, the girl was in a relationship with the Scottish actor Angus McBodian. They were even engaged, but they broke up before the wedding. In 1998, the fast-paced action film The Mask of Zorro stormed onto the screens. The shooting was also extremely intense and was accompanied by a lot of curious details and events. The role of Elena could go to Penelope Cruz, Swedish actress Isabella Skorupko, or passionate singer Shakira. But it was Catherine who got lucky. In order to fit into the role perfectly, the actress, as she usually does, eagerly began to learn disciplines useful for the filming – horse riding, fencing, dancing, Spanish. She was particularly successful in learning the latter. So much so that people who didn't know her biography could swear that she was a real Spaniard. The film was a resounding success, earning $250 million at the box office with a budget of $95 million, and also scored two Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. Would you care to try something more uh, robust, or do you feel unequal to the task? No, on the contrary, Don Alejandro. I think only of your distaste for perspiration. <laughs> In the same year, another small event happened that affected the rest of Zeta Jones' life. The actress made an unforgettable impression on the Hollywood titan Michael Douglas, so much so that he immediately wanted her to become the mother of his children. So, as soon as he could, he started looking for a way to meet her. The first conversation happened during a festival in France and did not impress the actress. The experienced seducer Douglas played his trump cards right away, dumping his plans on her. But Catherine just laughed it off. But the actor had no plans to give up. He showered the girl with gifts, flowers, and she didn't even notice how she began to talk to him for hours on the phone and also to dream of watching movies with him and cooking delicious dinners. From that moment on, persistent courtship turned into a traditional relationship. In 1999, Catherine was featured in the films The Haunting and Entrapment. The latter is called one of the best crime films. It made a real splash in the industry. The main male role of an imposing thief was played by Sean Connery. Zeta Jones kept up with her legendary partner and gave her best on the set. 
So, she performed a dangerous stunt, jumping from a ceiling beam onto a table while doing a backflip. The film earned $212 million at the box office with a relatively small budget and was very popular with the audience. Fans especially note the scene of Catherine passing through a grid of laser beams in which she shows the wonders of plasticity and grace. Also noteworthy are the shots when Connery's character comes to interrogate Catherine. She was lying under just a white sheet, and at this moment she is actually completely naked. I called you at 4.30 this morning. I was home in bed. You didn't pick up. I didn't want to pick up. You had company. He came in the window. How romantic. I think that's how he got in. The year 2000 was marked by a landmark event for Catherine and Michael, who learned that they would become parents. On New Year's Eve 2000, he proposed to his beloved and presented an antique ring worth $1 million. However, the purest 10 karat diamond and Michael's passionate desire to marry his beloved as soon as possible were somewhat overshadowed by the fact that the actor was still legally married. To solve this problem, the groom needed to give his ex a huge payoff of $45 million, and according to other sources, $60 million. In August, the Douglas couple had a son, whom they named Dylan. And in November of the same year, they had a luxurious wedding worth $1.5 million. The celebration took place at the famous Plaza Hotel in New York, and the bride's dress alone cost $250,000. The star's guests, including Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, Sharon Stone, Steven Spielberg, Jennifer Aniston, had fun and congratulated the newlyweds. Since Catherine and Michael understood the absurdity of trying to hide from the press on such a day, they pulled a trick and sold the rights to cover the event to the British magazine OK. The journalists were very interested in the couple, largely because of the large age difference. A fun fact is that the couple were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Few people believe that something could come out of this relationship, but as life has shown, the marriage of two stars turned out to be extremely strong although they had to go through a lot. Catherine herself calls the secrets of a successful marriage a sense of humor and respect. Although apparently the marriage contract, which the actress insisted on before answering the cherished yes, played a significant role. According to its terms, in case of infidelity, Michael is obliged to pay his wife a decent amount for each year of living together. The exact figure is unknown, but the range is between 1 million and 3 million. In 2000, the musical drama High Fidelity and the thriller Traffic were released, in which the actress starred while pregnant with her son. For this work, Catherine received a fee of $3 million and a Golden Globe nomination. I'm European. I say that to my, to my doctor. I'm European. I'm allowed to drink red wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my doctor said it was fine when I was pregnant. A glass a week, after a couple my of amnio, weeks. After my mm -hmm. amnio, he said, okay, now you can go and have a glass of red wine. Mm -hmm. You're like, I, I need had it. two. <laughs> In 2001, Zeta Jones appeared in the movie America's Sweethearts. By that time, Catherine's revenue was growing rapidly and amounted to $5 million. But the real triumph for Catherine was the adaptation of the Broadway musical Chicago. It should be noted that the plot of the drama is based on real events that took place in the U.S. in the early 20th century. The first attempt at a film adaptation was made by Miramax back in 1994, and before that, the rights of the production were bought by director Bob Fosse. According to his idea, the main roles were to be played by Lisa Minnelli, Golden Hawn, and Frank Sinatra, but due to the death of Foss, the project was abandoned. The director of the 2002 film, Rob Marshall, considered Charlize Theron, Madonna, Angelina Jolie, and Britney Spears for the leading female roles. And that's not the whole list. When it came to Zeta Jones, she was immediately offered the role of Roxy Hart, but the actress wanted to play Velma Kelly. She liked the song All That Jazz so much that she was happy to sacrifice both the main role and her gorgeous curls, which she cut to a neat bob with perfectly straight bangs. She did it on purpose so that the long hair falling over her face would not allow the audience to doubt that she performs all the dance routines in the film on her own. Then, by the way, the actress said that working in a musical was almost as painful and exciting at the same time as having a baby. No, 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 I, I dance in the chorus. Oh, well, that was before I met my husband Amos. Look, honey, you want some advice? Here it is, direct from me to you. Keep your paws off my underwear. 
Okay. Her Velma Kelly was loved not only by ordinary viewers, but also by professionals. For the role, the actress received a fee of $8 million, a nomination for a Golden Globe Award, and was also awarded an Oscar. The beauty arrived at the ceremony in a gorgeous black dress that did not conceal her rounded belly. The ceremony took place on the eve of her second childbirth. In 2003, the couple had a daughter, Karis Zedman. In the same year, two movies starring Zeta Jones appeared on the screens at once. These are the animated film Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, in which she voiced one of the main characters and the romantic comedy Intolerable Cruelty. 2004 brought her work on the memorable films The Terminal and Ocean's 12. The French police think he's better than Lamarck. Well, he is French. Let me give you some advice. Find out how you offended him. Apologize. Beg for mercy. The following year, a sequel to the film about the dashing vigilante was released. Catherine received $10 million for The Legend of Zorro. But all in all, the film made a strange impression. It received negative reviews, although it earned $142 million at the box office. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe I fell for it. Husband promises to quit. Gullible wife believes him. How could I be so stupid? In 2007, two more films were released. The supernatural romance film Death Defying Acts and the romantic comedy drama No Reservations. In fact, this was a remake of the German film Mostly Martha, which was reworked by the not-too-famous director Scott Hicks. But alas, it was not a masterpiece. Although the actress tried very hard and even worked incognito as a waitress in an Italian restaurant where visitors marveled at the resemblance of the employee to the celebrity. Nick is an expert. I know nothing about him. I had no idea what me so credit he was a sous chef at Ultraviso. Italian? You bring a sous chef from an Italian restaurant and I'm the one in therapy? This was followed by another obscure film, The Rebound, which was shot in New York, Istanbul, and Paris. The hard work in childbirth left a mark on the actress, and soon Catherine began to show symptoms of bipolar affective disorder. This disorder is described by alternating phases of heightened activity and depression, and significantly impairs one's life. Her star spouse was beginning to grow weary of this state of affairs, but then, like a thunderbolt from a clear sky, the news of his own illness came. In 2010, doctors diagnosed Michael with a terrible illness, laryngeal cancer. All this happened while Douglas's first son, Cameron, was arrested, charged with drug trafficking, and sentenced to five years in prison. Here, Catherine immediately switched and devoted all her energy to help her beloved spouse. A year later, Michael Douglas publicly announced that he had defeated cancer and returned to filming. Catherine, too, plunged into the familiar depths of cinema. In two years, she managed to appear in six films, Lay the Favorite, Rock of Ages, Playing for Keeps, Broken City, Side Effects, and Red 2. <sighs> how are things? Y yeah, Frank, how are things? Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> this is Katya. Yeah, hi. I need to speak to you. And at that moment, the actress's illness re-emerged in her and Michael's life with renewed vigor. This time, Douglas lost his nerve. He said that because of the depression that his wife was prone to, it was impossible to live with her, after which the couple announced their separation and the beginning of the divorce process. Michael also hinted that his wife was addicted to hard liquor because of her condition. However, three months later, the couple reunited. As reported, Zeta Jones underwent a course of intensive therapy, and she did get better. She resumed her acting career and appeared in the series Queen America, Feud, and Prodigal Son, as well as the films Dad's Army and Cocaine Godmother. In 2022, Catherine hit a new moment of stardom. In the Netflix series Wednesday, which became a worldwide hit, the actress played the role of Morticia Adams, the mother of an unusual and daring girl protagonist. What is this, a kidnapping? Would you like that? Because I think I'm up to it. <laughs> you do move me. I don't know why, but you do move me. In unusual places. 
Fans and critics who initially doubted this casting decision in the end agree that the actress's performance is worthy of praise. The duet of Catherine and the Puerto Rican actor Luis Guzman, who played her husband in the series, was particularly delightful. Despite a significant break in work and the troubles, Catherine has remained in good shape. Now, viewers can see her in the Disney series National Treasure Edge of History. It should be noted that the performance of the actress has always been generously paid. Now, Catherine Zeta-Jones, once a poor girl from the outskirts of Swansea, is a very rich lady. Her fortune is estimated at $150 million, and it's not just income from filming. It is reported that one second of the actress's advertising time costs about 4,000 euros. Over the years, she starred in advertisements for Elizabeth Arden Cosmetics, the Visa payment system, and Alfa Romeo Cars. A two-year contract with the mobile operator T-Mobile brought the actress 20 million, and in 2019, she was seen in a Fendi commercial where she starred with her daughter. A couple of years ago, Zeta Jones launched her own line of shoes in collaboration with the Butterfly Twist brand, known for its eco-friendly approach to production. In addition to the shoe collection, Catherine produces makeup, sportswear, and household goods under her own brand, Casa Zeta Jones. Over the years of marriage, Zeta Jones and Douglas have accumulated a high-end real estate portfolio. The star couple has a spacious apartment in New York with a view of Central Park, which they recently decided to sell. At first, the price was set at $21.5 million, but at the beginning of 2022, the couple decided to lower it to $19.5 million. Potential buyers will get a luxury penthouse with four bedrooms, a spacious living room, and a dressing room made in classic style. Apparently, in 2019, the family was going to rotate the property. They sold 12 acres of land in Westchester County, New York, which they bought in 2015 for $11 million, and managed to double the price. In the same year, they purchased a house in the same state worth $4.5 million. Also in 2019, an English-style villa in Bermuda worth $10.6 million was put up for sale, but in the end, the sale didn't take place, and the lot was withdrawn from auction. Catherine and Michael spent a lot of time in the house after the wedding, so their children didn't even suspect at first that they were growing up in a family of Hollywood celebrities. The couple has a Snow White villa hidden in lush greenery in Spanish Mallorca, which in the 19th century attracted the European nobility. The 10-bedroom house is decorated with great love, its design is tasteful and discreetly luxurious. Many of the interior decorations and furniture were chosen directly by the owners. The estate is quite large, totaling about 10,000 square feet. There is a formal dining room, several living rooms decorated with antiques, which Douglas is very passionate about. The estimated cost of this property is $33 million, but since Michael's ex-wife remains the co-owner of the property, it cannot be sold. The Hollywood diva owns a black Lexus SUV worth $130,000, which she drives in everyday life. Douglas and Zeta Jones were once spotted driving around Wales in a used Jaguar. As it turned out later, the couple arrived in the actress's hometown to participate in a golf competition. Catherine Zeta-Jones is a woman who impresses not only with her beauty, but also with her stunning determination. No matter what happens, she does not give up and looks into the face of any life circumstances, boldly challenging them. She is not afraid of experiments or difficult tasks. The musical Cleo will be released soon, in which the actress will play the fatal Egyptian queen Cleopatra. What movie with this actress do you like the most? Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Unfortunate that it has to end. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.